This is lecture three of Psychopharmacology, Psychology 6700. So in this lecture, I'm going to talk about the nervous system. Now, the nervous system involves several components. The brain is part of it, the spinal column, and then the nerves throughout the body. So first, a very brief overview of brain anatomy. These are some of the brain components that are important from the standpoint of psychopathology. Now the cortex is um, the surface of the brain and that's what's involved in higher processing. That's what allows me to do this lecture, allows you to do math, allows you to do most of the functions that require what we call thinking. When the cortex is affected, the psychopathology that results is dementia. The hypothalamus is a portion of the brain that regulates processes such as sleep, hunger, and sex drive. When the hypothalamus is affected, you get problems such as depression, anxiety, and sleep disorders. The limbic system is sometimes referred to as the emotional brain. It uh, regulates emotion, impulse control, and recent memory. So think about the sort of things that would be affected if you have damage to the limbic system. You're going to get emotional dysregulation, uh, depression, anxiety, uh, also impulse control disorders uh, occur with damage to the limbic system obsessive compulsive disorder and schizophrenia um, may also involve the limbic system. The basal ganglia is involved in motor control that's um, maybe implicated in OCD and also in EPS. Now that's not actually a psychiatric disorder but it's important for us to know EPS is extrapyramidal symptoms and you sometimes see those problems uh, as a side effect of antipsychotic medication. And then the reticular system is in the brain stem, uh, a primitive part of the brain, and that acts sort of as a relay station, uh, as a stimulus filter. Uh, so what happens if the stimulus filter doesn't work? Well, ADHD, attention deficit, is one obvious problem that you get as a result of that. And also schizophrenia. Uh, schizophrenics also uh, have difficulty distinguishing essentials from inessentials. Um, now to review the parts of the nervous system, the, the two large divisions are the central nervous system and the peripheral nervous system. Central nervous system is the brain and the spinal cord. The peripheral nervous system can be broken down further into two parts, the autonomic nervous system and the somatic nervous system. The somatic nervous system is involved in senses, transmitting sensory information to the brain, and also in voluntary movement. On the other hand, the autonomic nervous system can be further broken down into two parts, the sympathetic and the parasympathetic nervous system. So the sympathetic nervous system is the classic flight or fight response. Uh, when you're startled, uh, when you're anxious, sympathetic nervous system is triggered and you get symptoms such as um, uh, pounding heart, dry mouth, that's increased sympathetic nervous system activity. The parasympathetic nervous system is just the opposite and it's involved with relaxation. Uh, if you need a mnemonic, you can think that you'd be sympathetic for someone who was startled by a bear or, who, or, or someone who's being terrorized. So that's the end of our lecture.